Hi everyone, welcome to another great Virtilio Battle Report. My name is Lance. And I'm Nico. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we can just do that. It's not a problem. <laughs> Sorry. So, no, 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 we'll keep rolling. So, today we'll be playing Spring the Trap, set in the season of Antor. It's late 2023 right now, yeah. in case you want to know what Battle Scroll um, set we're in. It is October, it's actually we're about to hit November, right? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so that's basically where we're at. I'm going to be bringing my Iron Jaws, the Chapas, and Nico, what are you bringing? I'm going to be playing uh, Gloom Spread Gits, because I sold my Nurgle Army. So. Oh, you wow, that's sounds right. <laughs> yeah. Lost one turn, so gave that tournament and sold your army. There's <laughs> no proof. There's no proof. There's no evidence of that. There's literally a sale on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So let's go over my Iron Jaws army very quickly. Yeah. My Iron Jaws army is led by a mega boss on foot with destroyer artifact and oh the command trait hulking brute. He has two war chanters, one with a fix and beat and one with a get and beat. Shit. I also have uh, the one with the get and beat also has null dust. So wow. once per game, I, uh, during a hero phase, I can activate it to make it so that double ones, twos, and threes will cause a miscast, and any additional primal dice that triggers that condition will cause a primal miscast. <laughs> I'm also using the brand new Zogrok Anvil Smasher, who can give with Grunta Tongs, which allows me to give sixes to hit our mortal wounds to a unit on a two plus. I'm also going to be using a Tusk Boss on a Maw Grunta. And oh, the new pick. The new pick. He's not very good, but he's very interesting and very swinging. He's done either everything or nothing. That's if Lance wins his game, you can hold it over him. The pigs are good. You're gonna let me win? No. Oh, okay, just check. <laughs> okay, so I got two units of reinforced brutes. I got one unit of reinforced brute ragers and one unit of not reinforced brute ragers. Why don't you tell them about the brute ragers? These are new also, right? Yeah, so the brute ragers are really interesting. I got a, I got a unit of six that are armed with, uh, everything has brute choppas. They're threes and threes, red two, two damage each, and they can all run in charge at the expense of being a five up save instead of a four up save. And to round it all off, I have, I have a new unit of Art Boy Stickers. They got 220 points. Now they're really expensive, but with the Stickers, they have a two inch reach and they can also get an extra red when they're charging in combat. Yep. Explain your army, then we'll go over the battle plan real quick. Yeah, so it's like a counter, uh, counter cavalry, basically. No, it's more like an anvil. anvil. This okay. is the first proper anvil that Iron Jaws get. All right. Also, they have a three up save and shield bash, which is kind of cool. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Tell us about your army. Yeah, yeah. so this will be the debut for my Gloom Spite Kits, uh, officially online. So um, I'm playing Gloom Spite Kits. The sub faction I'm taking is Jaws of Mork. Mm -hmm. So I'm going for a more killy um, build. Yeah. So this is going to be majority are squigs. As you can see here, um, so Jaws of Mork gives you plus one to attacks uh, with bite attacks only for all the squigs. On the charge. On the charge. Yeah. There you go. That's important. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So my general I'm taking is the Mandra Squig, uh, the Loon Boss on Mandra Squig. He's not amazing either. There are better options, but you know we're having fun here, right? So yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> he says completely unprompted. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm bringing the Loon Boss on Mandra Squig. His command trait is Fight Another Day. So after he fights, he gets to roll two d6 and move that many inches away from an enemy. The catch there is he has to end outside of three inches though. Wow. So if I happen to roll low, yeah, and I can't be outside of three inches of an enemy, then I can't move. Okay. He can't move because he has to end outside three inches. Okay. Right. Yeah. Then the artifact he took is the uh, clammy cowl, so that means you are minus one to hits against him permanently, yes. all the time, just in case you catch me. Sure. sure. Yeah. And the fun thing about the Mandra Squig is he does have the new monster advantage, Giant Boy. After he charges, he gets to roll 3d6 and he gets to move that many inches, right. basically. Yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, aside from that, I'm taking Scragrot, who is a War Master. He knows all the lore spells, right. especially the, the, the sniping spell. Yeah, Phantom Horn. Phantom the Bad Boon. Sorry, oh, sorry Yeah. Moon. And he also counts as the uh, Bad Moon, holy within 12 inches of him. Right. Yeah. And he also can issue a free command once per turn. Very good. So a lot of utility here. Yep. And then for my other hero, I have a Moon Boss uh, with Nasha Squig, another new hero. Yep. He's the Squig hero that can buff Squig units within three inches of him and make uh, Squig herd pre-game move. Ah, move, move in the hero phase. Right. Basically. Yes. Yeah. So he can either give uh, extra bites on the, uh, extra bites flat, no need to charge. Or he can give mortal wounds and sixes or plus three to movement. Right. Yeah. 
that's basically it. The, I took a reinforced unit of squig herds. Double reinforced? Double reinforced yeah, squig herds, go. yeah. So that's 36 uh, squig herd models right yep. here. Uh, the catch is basically they just do damage when they run away. Yeah. Uh, then I took two units of reinforced void guard bounders. And I took a MSU unit of uh, 20 stamens, basically. Then I also brought Yi Gabapalooza, whose lore spell is um, Squiggler. Squiggler means they can just basically reroll charges for squigs. Right, yeah. That's basically it. That's my list. And uh, I'm 990, right? And you're 2,000 points. Yes, so you get the triumph. So I get the triumph. I took Indomitable, means I can ignore a battle shot. Or I can auto pass a battle shot throw. You can ignore the result of one roll. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. It's different from Inspiring Presence and yeah. in that you can roll to see the result first before declaring that you're using Indomitable, which is different from Inspiring, where you have to declare before you roll. What he said. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, now that we've talked about the army, the armies rather, yeah. let's talk about Spring the Trap. Spring the Trap is. Uh, I hate this battle plan. You had no problem with it when I suggested Okay. So, <laughs> so Spring the Trap is very interesting. We divide the board into into three columns essentially and the center column is where the deployment's at yeah the side call the 15 inches on the side is all empty space which makes for an interesting interaction for the battle tactics this season mm -hmm. and also after deployment we each roll we roll a d3 to represent both sides yeah and we can move d3 units from our side off the board to come in from reserve yep which i think is very interesting mm -hmm. but it's also very dangerous so with that it's not good for some armies. It's pretty good if yeah. for armies without with low mobility, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. wanna roll? I'm gonna roll the guy. Yeah, go ahead. D three. Four. So two. No, that's two. Yeah. Two Four. You don't have to roll. Oh, that's for that's it's for both of us. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It's okay. That's why I said just roll for two. Okay, so it's fine. So um you're the attacker, so you can and you finish the point first, so you can choose two units to bring up, and I choose two units after. I'm bringing up nothing. Okay. You know what? Yeah. Bring out nothing too. Wow! It's we're playing seasons of Andor with no Andorian wizards. And we're playing you have no Andorian locuses? No, I don't. Oh, that's so weird. You know what? I'm thinking about bringing something out now, just 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 because. Yeah. Totally. But it, it kind of screws my turn one attack if you give me first. So I'm not gonna take anything out. So yeah. Are you sure? I, no, I just say things I'm not sure of with camera all the time. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Um, right. What are you? Are you wanna take first? Okay. So. Nico is a one drop. I am a many drop. Yeah. Army. Bef before we start, yeah. I just want to remind you the bad moon will be on my uh, this part of this my quadrant. left quadrant right here. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Sure. sure. Hmm. This is tricky. You're kind of slow, I guess, but we're pretty close already. You can move eight inches with mighty destroyers. Yeah, sure. I got tricks. You got tricks. So I'm gonna take the first turn. All right. Very predictable. Nico yeah. always yeah. take the first turn. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're going to start with Gloom Spite Gits, turn one. Yeah. The Gloom Spite Gits move the moon on the lower left quadrant. The Gloom Spite Gits battle tactic is Intimidate the Invaders. The two players gain two primal dice each. And Dorian focus was given to the Mega Boss. The Mangler Squig fails heroic leadership, while the Mega Boss uses heroic willpower. The squig boss uses release the squigs and makes the squig herd move during the hero phase. Scragrot successfully casts Fang of the Bad Moon and deals 4 mortal wounds to the art boys. Gobapalooza casts Fungoid Cloud but miscasts and takes 1 mortal wound. Scragrot casts Mystic Shield but is unbound. The squig boss buffs the squig herd with yellow lurka from his mycophiles pouch. Gabapalooza buffs the mangler squig with glare face dance. The Stabus use at the double.
The squig herd charges but fails their charge. The mangler squig successfully charges and deals two mortal wounds with impact hits on the artworks. The mangler squig uses giant boy. The mangler squig uses all out attack and bite the moon while the brutes and art boys use all out defense from the mega boss. The loon boss on mangler squig splits his attacks and the brutes take 14 damage while the art boys take 2 damage. Then the Mangler Squig retreats with Fight Another Day. The Mega Boss issues inspiring presence to the Brutes and the Art Boys. The Gloom Spite Git scores 3 points but fails his battle tactic. Okay, so yeah. that was interesting. That was an interesting turn. I rolled two ones with my charge because I couldn't give them Squid Lore. Yeah. Uh, if I gave them the plus one to charge, they would have made it. Yeah, because, absolutely. Yeah, they, but they were too far already at that point because that's the problem with the rook. Hero face movement. Yeah. But I did fail my tactic also, which was really bad. I rolled really low on my run rolls, but my Magnus Squig managed to get some free hits in, I guess, which is pretty good. Yeah. But the double inspired also really good. Yeah. So let's, this is actually kind of interesting. The position is kind of interesting because I haven't tied you up yet, but they're still in your face. Yes. And none of them died this turn. So I guess they last longer now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's see what Lance does on his turn. So we're going to move to Iron Jaws round one. Right. The Iron Jaws battle tactic is lead into the Maelstrom. The Iron Jaws uses strategies to gain one command. The Mega Boss uses heroic leadership and proceeds to use it to rally the Brutes and the Yard Boys, but only one Brute returns. The Mangler Squig succeeds in heroic leadership. Zogrok Anvil Smasher uses Power of the Great Green God on the Brutes. The War Chanter gives Violent Fury on the Brute Rangers and the Tusk Boss. The Mega Boss issues Mighty Destroyer on the Tusk Boss to move and on the Art Boys to charge, which they succeed. The War Chanter plays Get em Beat to the Brutes. And the Iron Jaws call for a war! The Brute Ragers make their charge. The Brute Ragers on the right charge the Mangler Squig. The Mega Boss charges the Squigs and deals two mortal wounds on the Squig Herd with impact hits. The Brutes charges the Squig Herd. The Tusk Boss charges the Stabas and gains two momentum. The Tusk Boss uses Carbapath and deals two mortal wounds on the Hoppers and gains an additional two momentum. The Mangler Squig fails to roar on the Brutes. The Brutes use All Out Attack and deals a whopping 49 damage to the Squig Herd. The Loon Boss on Mangler Squig issues All Out Attack and attacks the Brutes for 18 damage and moves out of combat with Fight Another Day. The Brute Ragers fights and splits attack with the Squig Herd and the Gabapalooza, dealing 12 damage to the Squig Herd and 10 damage to the Gabapalooza. The Boingrot Bounders attack the Tusk Boss and deal 9 damage. The Tusk Boss fights back and deals 12 damage to the Boingrot Bounders. The Squig Herds use Indomitable to skip Battle Shock. Iron Jaw scores one objective and his tactic, scoring a total of three points. Okay, that was very interesting, and the fight is a lot closer than it looks, actually. Yeah. So he used Indomitable to save the Squig Herd. I did a water turn, basically wiping a lot of things out. You wipe uh, the Hoppers, uh, the Palooza. You, you wiped out. Boingrub Bounders yeah. on my back foot, and you wiped out the Galapalooza from the Battle Shock, basically. Yeah. But surprisingly, the Squid Herd's alive, right? So, yeah. yeah, the Squid Herd's alive. So, all the key pieces are there. The Tusk, the tusk Boss almost got taken down by <laughs> the, uh, what do you call those? The Boingrub Bounders. Boing bounders. Without the charge, which yeah. Which is very depressing. Yeah. That is what it is. He's down to how many wounds? Five wounds left. He's got five wounds left. That's interesting. I think Goblins can take him down. Yeah, Goblins can definitely take him down. He's not that, he's not that tough. He's very swingy. I rolled very low with him, which is very sad. But 
it is what it is. I think that if you take the turn, you have a very good chance of swinging the game back in your favor because you have a lot of very explosive plays to make. Yeah. Uh, so, something I'd like to add, uh, the reason why I used Indomitable on these guys instead of my point guard mounters yeah. was I wanted to keep these guys tied up just in case of the double turn, right? Yeah. I wanted less stuff moving forward. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I kept that here also was in case I get the double turn, I get to bring back more squigs. Correct. Yeah, that's the perfect amount, almost perfect amount of herder stuff because I lost one, sadly. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. So here's so, the big roll. Yeah, Wait, will the bad boy move though? Oh yeah, I'll roll that. No, no it, it stays, stays in that's this okay. quadrant, right? Yeah. That's really good. That's fine. Prio, three. Will you roll a two? Three! Okay. I win the Prio! All right. Woo! Oh, that's good. Oh, so you're going to blue it. It's turn two. I knew it. I was confident this. I'm joking. I was. The moon stays in the lower left quadrant. The gloom spite gets battle tactic is moonlight raid. Optimal focus goes to the war chanter. The mangler's quick succeeds with heroic leadership. The war chanter uses heroic willpower. The squig boss Nash's quick gives himself plus one fang filled gob attacks with sprouted moon. The squig herder returns nine squigs with herding squig. Scragros casts Ichinusens on the brutes. Scragros casts Fangs of the Bad Moon and deals five mortal wounds to the brutes. The Boingrod Bounders successfully make their charge. The Mangler Squig stomps on the brutes, finishing them off. The Boingrod Bounders uses all out attack and fight the brutes with all out defense but still manage to deal 20 damage. The Brute Ragers attacks the Squig Herd, dealing 27 damage. The Mangler Squig attacks the Art Boys, dealing 11 damage, and moves out of combat with Fight Another Day. The Brutes attack the Squig Hoppers, dealing 7 damage. The remaining Squigs run from Battle Shock and deal 1 damage to the Brutes in the center. Inspiring Presence was used on the Art Boys and the Brutes from in the center from the Mega Boss. Holding 1, 2, and more objectives, as well as scoring their battle tactic, Gloom Spite gets ends the turn with 5 points. This has been such a bloody turn. Holy crap. Right? Even feel? when I got the double turn, uh, even when I got the priority, yeah. it was still pretty risky actually. Uh, yeah, I almost lost the objective. If I went down to if I went down by one guy, I would yeah. lost the tactic and the objective because I didn't like wait. So hmm. The matter is cleaning up. So oh, much, yeah. So much, and he hasn't taken a single wound yet, and he's just bouncing around. Yeah, the retreat. At the, is it a retreat technically, or is it just moving away? It's just moving away. Oh, okay. Just, it's just yeah. a free move away. Yeah, that adds some quest. That adds some, and you can get away from Kron's fine. Yeah, okay. you could. Okay. Yeah. So, and I decided not to charge here because I didn't want to just free moving. Yeah, that would just give me extra momentum. Yeah. And, stuff. and if I did manage to bring back a squaker, that would have been funny because I would have been. Yeah, I'd just be waiting. Range. Yeah, I know. <laughs> It'd be so frustrating. I know. So. Yeah. Yeah, this is a very good turn in your party. He scored a maximum five points, five points so he's yeah. back up to eight. And I need to do stuff this turn, or else I think I just I'm, I'm not gonna get I'm gonna get blown away in terms of points. I think you got. I mean, I'm, I'm not in a terrible position. You're not in a terrible position. These guys are still a huge threat. I've been sleeping on these guys. Quite yeah, quite. these guys are surprisingly heavy. Yeah. But yeah, all right. Um, Nice <laughs> I think that's all. Uh, that's everything, yeah. I control two objectives. I I, I control all three actually. Yes, you all control three all points. points. Yeah, that's point. I think that's really good. You're doing your inspiring presences are really good. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. Let's go to Iron Jaws turn two. Yeah. Don't mind the mess here, by the way, because there's just too much stuff on the board. I might be able to bring back. Yeah. The Iron Jaws battle tactic is surround and destroy. Iron Jaws uses heroic recovery on the Tusk boss but fails. Scragrod successfully gains heroic leadership. The War Chanter tries to heal the Mega Boss with Fix and Beat, but fails. Zogrog Anvil Smasha 
fails to buff the brutes. The war chanter buffs the brutes and the mega boss with violent fury. The mangler squig redeploys and moves two inches. The tusk boss successfully makes the charge. The charging brute ragers make their charge. The mega boss makes their charge. The war chanter makes his charge. The tusk boss breaks the loon shrine with smash the rubble. The mega boss activates destroyer and issues all out attack to attack the squig herds but only deals 6 damage. The squig boss fights the tusk boss with all out attack but deals no damage. The brutes fights the squig hoppers and deals no damage. The squig hoppers fight back and deal 3 damage to the brutes. A second all-out attack from the Mega Boss is used on the Ragers attacking Scragrot and this kills him. The War Chanter fighting the Boingrot Bounders deal 1 damage. The Tusk Boss fights the Squig Boss and finishes him. One Brute runs from Battleshock. All the remaining Boingrot Bounders run from Battleshock. With that bloody turn, Iron Jaws holds one objective and scores his battle tactic, scoring 3 points. All right, so this is our bog standard destruction yeah. matchup. He has two units left on the board, but no bad moon shrine. That was the really big one. Yeah. I'm just really glad nothing was brought back or recycled. Everything else has run away. I got my Surround and Destroy with my Tusk Boss, my Brute Ragers, and my Zogrop. And honestly, the, the reinforced Brute Ragers, these guys are the, the heroes of the match. They're so doing far. work, yeah. They're doing so much work, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't complain at all. Yeah, the Mangler is still alive. The Mangler, so there's still hope. There's still a lot of hope, actually. My Tusk Boss is still alive, and yeah. your Grots are no rend, right? Yeah, they don't. Oh, okay. So They're saving on threes, right? Saving on threes. Oh. So that's kind of nice for me. Yeah. So yeah, as of right now... Oh, we'll get around three? Yeah, well, yeah, by the way, the Bad Moon did, did not, not move. move again. Yeah, so we rolled it off camera. Yeah. So I guess that's moved to round three. Let's yeah. go for priority. Six. Yeah, if he rolls a six, which he has done before, he makes it to five. five. I don't mind. I will take the turn. Because yeah. right. I need to start scoring some points. Yep, you do. Alright, now we're gonna I go. I think to... the matter is safe here. I think the ones in trouble is the goblins, I guess. Maybe. Yeah. But oh, anyways, we'll, we'll go to Iron Jaws, turn three. Yeah. The bad moon stays in the lower left quadrant. The Iron Jaws battle tactic is that's our turf now. The Tusk Boss heals two wounds with heroic recovery. The Mangler Squig uses his finest hour. The optimal focus goes on the Mangler Squig. The War Chanter uses Violent Fury on the Mega Boss and the Savage Brutes. Zogrok Anvil Smasher buffs the War Chanter with Power of the Great Green God. The Tusk Boss charges the Stabas and gains 6 momentum. The Tusk Boss's Carp the Path fails. The Tusk Boss uses All Out Attack and the Stabas use All Out Defense, but the Tusk Boss wipes off the Stabas. The Iron Jaws hold one objective and scores his battle tactic, scoring 3 points. Okay, alright. Alright, that was a really not so great uh, prior roll turn for me. Well, I'm white. I got three. Oh. You're white, you're down to one model, but. It's the Mangler. It's the Mangler, and you still have tactics and you hold both objectives because I failed my carve the path. Yeah. I don't know why they made it so that you have to roll below momentum. It could have been equal to or less, but it is what <laughs> it is. Uh, he wiped the unit though, so you're down to one model. You Can't have no bad. Can't be too good. Can't be too good. Exactly. Indeed. But yeah, it is what it is. I... God gives the hardest fights to his strongest warriors. You can... Yeah, stop that, no. <laughs> It's very weird to do that. <laughs> so yeah, um, overall, I'm happy with my position, but I need to win Pryo for turn four, yeah. or else I'm gonna have a very difficult time catching the three points. This is actually interesting, yeah. Your grand strat was what again? Protect the Loon Shrine. Oh yeah, never He's mind. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's done. Yeah, he just say he did not protect the Loon I did not protect it. Okay, so yeah, that's it. I uh, got nothing else to say. I wiped everything out besides this. I formed a defensive perimeter. But the fact that the Mangler is still fresh is huge. It is. And it's on the weak flank. Yeah, but you have far. two turns left to wipe. No, three turns left to wipe. Yeah. Okay. Three turns. That's it. That's uh, we're going to go to Gloomspite Gets turn three. The Gloomspite Gets battle tactic is follow the move. The Mangler Squig and Mega Boss both fail heroic leadership. The art boys rally, but no models return. 
the Mangler Squig successfully charges the Ard Boys and finishes them off with impact hits. The Mangler Squig attacks the Brood Rangers with all out attack and wipes them out. Then the Mangler Squig retreats with Fight Another Day. Holding one, two, and more objectives, as well as scoring his battle tactic, Gloom Spite Git scores 5 points. Alright, let's roll for the moon. Bad moon, big deal, because I might not have tactics later. The moon, moon moves to the center. center. Okay. Alright, okay, so that Stabbermoon Dark is gone. Yeah. So that was a crazy, uh, very quick turn 3. Yeah. You charged in, did impact it to the Art Boys, and killed the, the Brutes, uh, the Savage. Brute Rages, yeah. and, and, you, boy, yeah. and you just ran off. Yeah, That was really huge. I think that there's a chance I lose if I don't get solid prios for the next few rolls. Yeah. So we got two more rounds. Yeah, Two more rounds going. So let's roll for prio. Yep. This is, this, this is the research. All right. Five. Six! Okay, you'll take the prior priority because Nico is Nico. And we're going to go to Gloom's Wait Wait a minute. Are, we, are, are, you giving, are you going to give it away? No, what's that? Okay. <laughs> what the oh. character development is going on? Character de All right. I almost had a character development there. Okay, so we're going to Gloom's by Gets turn four. The bad moon moves to the center of the board. The Gloom Spite Gets battle tactic is reprisal. Optimal focus will be on the Mega Boss. The Mangler Squig succeeds in heroic leadership, but the Mega Boss does not. The Mangler Squig uses at the double. The Mega Boss uses heroic leadership to redeploy himself and the Brute Ragers five inches. The Mangler Squig charges and uses forward to victory, but still fails the charge. Gloom Spite Gits holds one, two, and more objectives, but fails his battle tactic, scoring three points. This is a very stressful game. <laughs> I hate this game. I, I hate Warhammer. Warhammer is a You hear me? Game. Yeah, I know. Don't listen to them, James Workshop. James Workshop, nerf orcs, please. No, oh, don't nerf orcs. Really? Okay, so <laughs> I, it's going to be bottom of Iron Jaws 4. It was a very quick turn. The Mangler Squig moved, moved and failed because I did a 5 inch redeploy. Wow! I failed reprisal. What you were rolling high was a tactic. It is a very viable tactic. <laughs> so that. Shit. Unfortunately, that is all she wrote. He scores three points, and I need a, it's still a close game because I still need to score both tactics and hold more objectives, which should not be the hardest thing to do right now. Yeah. So That's we're going to go to Iron Jaws turn four. Mm -hmm. The Iron Jaws battle tactic is Intimidate Invader. Heroic recovery on the Tusk boss heals three wounds, while the Mangler Squig gains heroic leadership. The War Chanter uses Violent Fury on the Mega Boss and the Brutes. Zogrok Anvil Smasha buffs the Brutes with the power of the Great Green God. The Mega Boss issues Mighty Destroyer to charge with the Brute Ragers and they make their charge. He also issues Mighty Destroyer to himself but fails his charge. The Tusk Boss has 6 momentum. The Mega Boss and the War Chanter uses At the Double. The Mangler Squig redeploys one in. Holding one, two, and more objectives and scoring his battle tactic, Iron Jaws score five points. All right, yeah, the momentum of this game has gone up, unlike my fate was down momentum five because yeah. of the stupid mechanic. So <laughs> all I did for this turn was I wanted to intimidate and make sure that my units were, I had four units outside of my territory. Yeah. And I scored five points, finally get that objective back. Yep. And that's pretty much all I can do for this turn. All I can do is hope for the prio. Roll for the bad moon. Bad moon? Nope. Stay in the center, so no stab him in the dark for you. That's good. So let's roll off for priority. Final roll. Two. Three. Okay. All right, going to Gloom's Gets round five. The Gloom Spite Gets battle tactic is led into the maelstrom. The Mangler's Quig succeeds with heroic leadership. And Dorian focus was given to the Mega Boss. Zogrok and the Mega Boss redeploy and move four inches. The Mangler Squig charges the War Chanter. 
The Mangler Squig stomps the War Chanter and deals 2 damage. The Mangler Squig used All Out Attack against the War Chanter and finishes him off. And then he moves again with Fight Another Day. With their last stand, the Gloom Spike Gits fails their final tactic and scores 3 points. So that was an interesting turn 5. Yeah. I think not being able to kill my Mega Boss might have sealed the fate of the game, yeah. but it's still really close. <sighs> and let's see just how much hubris I have. There's a weird possibility that I just... No, I don't think I can throw the game at this point. Is there a way? I don't think so. No, I, I, as long as I hold this objective, I'm okay. Yeah, you just gotta hold it. Yeah, so, but we're gonna go to Iron Jaws turn 5 anyway, yeah. and I have a surprise tactic. That's very reminiscent of what he just did in the last turn, so... Ooh. The Iron Jaws battle tactic is Bait and Trap. The Mega Boss and the Mangler Squig both successfully do heroic leadership. The Mega Boss issues Mighty Destroyers of Zogrok and the War Chanter, and they make their charge. Zogrok and the War Chanter retreat for their battle tactic. The Tusk Boss charges the Mangler Squig. The Brute Rangers charge the Mangler Squig. The Tusk Boss roars the Mangler Squig, and the Mangler Squig does the same. The Mega Boss issues All Out Attack using heroic leadership to the Blue Rangers and kill the Mangler Squig. Overwhelming the Gloom Spite gets through sheer force, the Iron Jaw succeeds their battle tactic, scoring 5 points, and scores their grand strategy, scoring another 3 points. That's 16 moves he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so bait and trap, I score 5 points and I score my grand Wait, strategy. Wait, I explode! Ah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, finally, video evidence of Iron Jaws defeating Gloom Spike Gits on the internet. Right, you know what that means, Games Workshop? Nerf <laughs> Iron no, Jaws! Iron Jaws. No. Oh, so wait. that means pigs aren't bad. No, actually, no, the real heroes were actually these guys. These the, guys did a lot of work. Yeah, the six savage brute rages killed an ungodly number of anything, right? You know they killed Scragrot, they killed the Mangler Squig, they killed a lot of Squigs. Yeah. And the Boingrot. Oh, no, they didn't kill they the Boingrot. You know what? I actually regret not bait and trap. Actually, you know, I think I, I could have. I definitely could have played better as the first turn, but that was really disappointing for me, man. But I guess I could have kept something in reserve. I think the goblins I could have kept in reserve. I, I could have done them into the maelstrom. Weirdly, I think the Tusk boss is actually my MVP this game. Just yeah. because he, he took a flank on by himself, although he kind of dirtled a bit on yeah, this yeah, yeah, He broke the shrine, that was big. He did, that was big. That, that was, was big. massive. So you can't really sleep on the, the, the Mega Boss, uh, the, this guy. Because he kind of has the flyover stuff, just like. Yeah, that's true. So you, can get, it, you can get into position of someone's big plant base and even bully them. Even that one time he failed Carpet Pack, which got huge. you an extra like four points. That was huge. That almost uh, sealed the deal. That almost, yeah, that almost that, that double, the game away from That me. double five he did for was big. Yes. That was yeah, yeah, huge. Because I made that charge. Like, I just sold like. Oh, no, that's double ones again. Oh, that's a four. <laughs> I think you're going really bad with my charge. But the attacks were solid. The Mandler Squig was doing a lot of work. Yeah. The MVP was the Mangrish. Oh, uh, by, by a mile. By a yeah, mile. This thing killed so much. I think the squig hurt failing a reroll charge is huge. Given your no, playstyle. Didn't get the didn't get no, no, given sorry. Given your playstyle, do you think Bloodthirsty might be a better investment? Can I issue the squig hurt? No, because it's not a it's not a command. It's just a reroll charge. So you can even but, do it out yeah, of the thing. I'm keeping Yeah, but Indomitable makes more sense. It's just it's Elemental will actually make them hold the point longer. It let me when you got the when I got the double when I got the priority, I was able to rally them back because I didn't I stopped them from running away. Do you think lower points into double triumph bloodthirsty and indomitable would be interesting? I'm thinking taking fifteen a unit of fifteen boy drops maybe. But you're not a one drop anymore. No. You oh you don't want to stick to one drop. I'm still It's your playstyle, okay. It's the playstyle, yeah. yeah. And uh if they ran away earlier, yeah, there was the risk also of you got the double turn. You would have just charged everything against them for already. That's true. Yeah, the squid herd holding the point and them coming back. Remember, I was I got the objective by one guy. Yeah. So it really mattered. No, no, you're right. Mm -hmm. It did. I think you need to slap through that one. Also, I need to hold the point. But yeah, good game. Good game. <laughs> I know. 
it's okay, it's okay. You'll get me. Don't worry, I'll get him in the GC. You'll get me in the GC. Oh, oh wow, GC. this is a threat. I'm not using the same list. But yeah, we're using GC. a stronger list, and I'm gonna be stronger too. He lied about the number of picks I had. Okay, Fine. but yeah, I think that, that was, was, that was, that was, that was an game. insane game. Yeah. though. I was really happy with that game. Yeah, so the Choppas still have some teeth. I, I guess. got played these stuff. Yeah. Um, I got really lucky. No, I got really lucky with the Squigs game in charge in turn one. That was. That probably was the biggest turning point of the game. I don't think they would have done much either. They killed. They would have killed your art boys. Yeah, That's but it. the art boys did lots of things. They pinned things on the sideboard. I guess I the mega boss issuing two inspiring presents per turn was also big. The art boy also got the mega hit. That's true. <laughs> yeah, they give us and they give. They take us yeah, away. It's weird. Yeah, weird. It was a weird turn. Uh, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Um, shit. Yeah. So before we go, I just want to thank. Jello with Mantis Mantis Gaming for the terrain. Yeah, for Mantis work. Sorry, Mantis works for for this for this beautiful lava terrain. Oh no, it's just a base block. Yeah. Yeah. And we hope that you guys enjoy the battle report. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you really like this Ooh. kind of format for battle report, give us a like, give us a sub, and we hope to see you in the next video. Yeah. Peace.